Oh, well, nothing to see here. Just another day of flying the V-22 Osprey. Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about a very, very special VTOL plane, which is, of course, the MV-22B, the U.S. Marines V-22 Osprey. Here we have it for the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Definitely what I think one of the most interesting planes you find in the U.S. military. I mean, check this out. This thing can take off vertically and then tilt its rotors and then fly horizontally really quickly kind of like that there we go uh-huh and now we're going full-on plane mode of full power check this out v22 osprey is flying nicely you can see now these giant rotors now giving this plane incredible power but of course the vtol plane as i for example showed in yesterday's video is quite hard to engineer and does have its deficiencies Oh my no! With the biggest concern being, well, safety of course. There we go, right now we're having a V-22 Osprey Classic. So what happened here now was that the left and the right engine now just failed. Okay, we have a dual engine failure because we over-revved the engine. I think you were able to see and that. And we've got a problem. Since this thing is neither a helicopter nor a plane, we are faced with the difficult situation of death because we can auto-rotate, which is something you can normally do in a helicopter. Auto-rotation is a state of flight in which the main rotor system of a helicopter turns by the action of air moving up through the rotor. This way, if you're inside of a helicopter, you can theoretically auto-rotate back to the ground safely. No, helicopters don't just fall out of the skies in case of engine failure. Whereas this thing does. Um, which is happening right now. It's literally falling out of the sky. Also, these wings are too short and too small, practically, to glide down. And so this is why we just fell out of the skies. That is something that happens quite a bit on the V-22 Osprey. Or at least it seems. I mean, not too long ago, the V-22 Osprey came into more controversies with another uh, triple fatal crash right off the coast of Australia. This one wasn't an engine failure. Uh, plane just crashed onto the carrier deck. But yes, indeed, Thursday dedicated Wikipedia page to the accident and incidents involving the V-22 Osprey. Starting in 1991, there's a lot. Yes, 15 hull loss accident happens out of the 400 that were built. In civilian aviation, this thing would be genuinely a death trap. I mean, we've made so many, you know, memes about the 737 MAX. No one would be flying this thing anymore with this kind of safety record in airline aviation, but in military, this is definitely a whole other story. So already, is this true? Is the V-22 Osprey the unsafest military plane or overall plane ever? No. I found this interesting article here with this funny picture. We have a beautiful graph here that compares several military planes. Here we've got the MV-20 22B with a mishap rate of 3.9 out of 100,000. And you can see it's quite below, you know, hey, famous airplanes like the F-18 or, or the C-20 Transport or even the 53E helicopter. So no, this plane isn't the unsafest. So you're, you're good there. Although it's, uh, it's really cool. Boom. So here on the military threat on Reddit, I found a very interesting discussion between users and V-22 pilots. Some points of critiques. For example, it can't carry all that much cargo, which is somewhat true. I mean, this thing can carry only nine tons of cargo. Compare that to, you know, other helicopters, big army helicopters like the Super Stallion. Once again, the CH-53E. This one can carry up to 14.5 tons. Or the Mega Me 10, which can carry up to 25,000 kilograms. From a helicopter's perspective, this thing cannot carry much. But also from a plane's perspective, 9 tons is practically nothing. Overall, the performance of this plane is, you know, mediocre. For example, we can't really take off here at 10,000 feet. We're on this, like, helicopter platform. I'm trying to go full power. This thing was not made for altitude, but it says Marines on it. I don't think that was the initial goal anyway. Check this out. We're, literally, this thing won't take off. We're at full power. You can see that. Oh, and now uh, we've done an Osprey Classic. Oh, all right. I mean, we can do something here. And I just kind of just jump off this platform. Oh, something like that. There we go. That pushes us in mid-air. Oh, please survive. No, may seem there are cargo planes and helicopters that, you know, can do a whole lot better than the V-22 Osprey at higher altitudes. But again, that's not what this plane was made for. So I don't think that's a very valid argument. Yeah, this is more like it. We can maybe take off. And yes, for sure. This is definitely an operational V-22 Osprey. Something that isn't very common. Uh. Because this aircraft is known as a maintenance 
nightmare. I mean, this aircraft only has an availability of 60%. Now, the thing they say is you wouldn't want to fly it in any adverse conditions, for example, in storms, which may be true. In general, I think this plane would be relatively scary to be on board of. There you go, there's like 40 knots of wind. Although, you know what? It's actually not performing that poorly. Oh, oh, oh no, no, no. Maybe the physics are a bit off, too. Oh, please don't crash. Oh, now this has become hard. All right. I guess we need a little bit more wind. Proper ocean wind. We need lots of gusting, lots of turbulence. Perfect. Ah, plane still stabilizes itself here in the simulator very, very well. I mean, you wouldn't want to fly any hot helicopter in poor conditions, would you? It's like, I don't really see what how that argument makes sense anyway. All right, come on. Let me try to land here on the small little surface here. Come on. Oh, all right, that's a cl classic. So let's maybe talk about the crash systems. The actual point of this video, because there have been so many crashes. The thing is, something you have to point out is that most of these crashes happened during development of the airplane. I mean, this plane was definitely built with the idea in mind that it would be incredibly crashable. And so a lot of redundancies were engineered. I mean, okay, for example, this thing can drive off of only one operational engine anyway, because they're both connected. So even if one engine fails, you have the other one to go. I mean, we can do that. Um, perhaps we can do that right now. Right engine control, turn it off. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. You can see that is happening right now, but that doesn't stop the airplane from flying at all. And a dual engine failure case is so rare. But this is hardly a problem. There we go. We can actually land pretty nicely. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Don't ruin my point. Don't ruin my point. Don't ruin my point. Okay. Another classic. I think maybe the Oh, model is a bit broken too. You know some other redundancy that were built into this plane with three hydraulic systems, two engines, four generators, four generators, two rudders, three flight control computers, and you only need one each of those to keep flying. So technically, this isn't this isn't bad at all. Well, you can, we can maybe even fly off of one engine. Can we try to take off again? There we go. That kind of works. Despite one engine being dead, we're able to reach the skies, no problem. So we're already about the V-22 Osprey. Sure, it's had its crashes, and those were very controversial and big. After all, this is an incredibly interesting plane with kind of unusual technology. And so it makes sense that, you know, accidents with this airplane go, you know, a bit more controversial. But is it bad? No. I think it's a brilliant little aircraft. I mean, VTOL is cool, combining the world of being able to take off anywhere and flying incredibly quick with those propellers. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. I think we've now had a dual engine failure. I think we're genuinely fucked. All right, uh, guys, we have a problem. Landing gear down. Oh, this thing cannot glide at all. Oh my God. Okay, you wouldn't really want to end up in a... Oh. Great. Yeah, no, in a normal scenario, this thing uh, I think would be great, but obviously flying just a normal helicopter perhaps and definitely flying a plane is a whole lot less dangerous so there you have it thank you so much for watching today's dangerous video and i'll see you guys tomorrow as always good night now thank you very much to my highly supporting members like jamie ashton mike c james deram ragings met rlg matt van z moritz bellhausen knots enthusiast shadow new the york ryland williams kelly chaos john o'brien and i'm addicted to airbus a380s. Thank you.